Hello, I'm James Wells, Education Manager at Crayola. We're excited to share this series, Creative Spa for Teachers with everyone who educates children. This is a special time and place where you can rejuvenate, refresh, and rekindle your creative spirit. While you are enjoying energizing creative experiences today, you will also receive great tips on how to bring mindful experiences to your children. I am thrilled to introduce today's guest, Anna Dezingle, who is a teacher, author, and blogger at Babble Dabble Do. Welcome, Anna. Thanks for having me, James. I'm so happy to be with you. So Anna, you are an architect and industrial designer turned STEAM teacher and creativity blogger. Can you tell us more about those roles and how those experiences influence the projects you like to do with kids? Yeah, well, I, you know, for many years, I practiced um, architecture, and I was also an industrial designer. I designed furniture. And then once I had my own children, I really started, like, enjoying the process of bringing everything that I'd learned as a designer, all the creativity and the problem solving and the design process. I loved sharing that with kids. And first, it was with my own kids, and we would do creative projects together, and then as my kids aged, because they're now teens, <laughs> I decided, you know what, I think I want to keep working with children in this capacity. And so I started teaching and I started my own STEAM program. I'd already had a blog going where I was documenting some of those creative things that I was doing with my children. And it just kind of evolved from there into a, an after school program. And I also teach preschool now. So there's so much more to being creative than just say, knowing how to paint or draw. I mean, there's this whole, there's so many fields in the arts and design. And I really wanted, given my background to bring that to kids and show them, you know, it's not just about drawing, it's about making, it's about problem solving. It's about taking risks and trying new things. And so that's kind of where I think the design portion came in for me. And that's how, well, that's what I bring to my classes. As a former preschool educator myself, there's right. certainly lots of creativity, as you well know, that happens within any preschool setting. So we all know that creativity manifests in many ways. And while having step-by-step -step instructions can create consistent projects, we know as educators, uh, flexibility is important for individuals to design using their own ideas. So with that, why is it important for adults and children to have open-minded, open-ended, flexible learning experiences? I think back to when I was a kid, and I think one of my fondest memories of making things as a child was with my grandfather. So he was a an inventor, I guess you would call him. He, he made scientific equipment. He had this phenomenal shop in his like garage and we would go over there and visit him. And then he would send my brother and I home with a bag of junk and <laughs> basically all the casts off from his projects. And so we would go back to our house and we would just spend hours like sorting through it and making things. And I think I didn't know it at the time, but that's really what process art and open-ended projects is all about. It's about looking at being inspired by the materials, being just open, having an, having a blank slate to work with, no particular outcome desired, rather you're just taking these materials and seeing what happens. I think in education, we, we tend to look at all the like fancy projects that are sort of step-by-step -step. while kids may be learning a skill and learning about a material, they're not necessarily exploring their own ideas. And that's why I think process-based open-ended projects are so important. I try to do a little of both because I want kids to have certain skills and experiences with materials, but then I always, always have a component where they're doing an open-ended portion of it, or in our classes, we often call it tinkering. We have a tinkering time where they, we might give them a prompt, but other than that, it's completely open to their interpretation. And usually they come up with the coolest ideas. <laughs> and I think adults need more of that too, because we're always very focused on a product at the end. But oftentimes it's those like experiences we have where we're just kind of doodling or testing out a material where real ideas come to fruition. That's been my experience as a designer. 
another great example uh, from your moments with your grandfather and these tools and gadgets and toys and castaways turned into treasure for you, right? Where in some aspects of the art world, we, we look at what other people consider trash and turn it to treasure. So it's the idea of playing with materials. One of the things we say here at Crayola, Anna, is we encourage adults to pull forward that childlike spirit. We may sometimes keep tucked away. So whether it's taking time to make things on our own or with our kids, it's important to take time to playfully create. You launched a program that encourages parents and caregivers to work on activities alongside their kids. Talk to us about the benefits that you've noticed among both the parents and the kids as they create and work together. The preschool that I teach at is a cooperative preschool. So that means that parents work there as well. So I've, I've kind of seen the whole thing where you have kids and parents working together, me working with my own children. I have found so many benefits to this. So when I first started blogging, I was primarily talking about my own experiences at home, making things with my kids. It was a lot of fun. Frankly, it was just a great time for us to connect as a family even with little kids, we find that we're so, so busy all the time that like just making a little bit of space in the afternoon, maybe 15, 20 minutes to do a simple creative project. It really felt like I was connecting with my children. And I think just for the social benefit, the social emotional benefits alone, it's wonderful. So when a, a, an adult works alongside a child, it's a wonderful example of modeling because we often kind of tell kids what we want them to do, or, you know, we give them like guidance, but are we modeling that behavior ourselves? So when they see an adult in their life being creative, an adult in their life enjoying creativity, I think that is, a it, it, it really shows them the power of what you can do with creative projects and that it's a fun thing to do. So we're not just saying, hey, go, go with your crayons and make something. You're actually sitting down and like maybe playing a drawing game with them or experimenting with the crayons or something. You know, there's all kinds of things that adults and kids can do together. And that brings up another thing. There's a lot of projects that adults can help facilitate because I've done a lot of projects where I will, maybe they're a little too complicated or there's one step that's a little challenging, but if the adult's there to kind of help facilitate part of it, kids can make amazing stuff. <laughs> so I find it's, it's a great kind of push and pull where we're working together to come up with something really interesting. And then they're gaining so much knowledge, watching the, the adult in their life enjoy this with them. One of the things that I've noticed, and I'm sure you've noticed, is uh, kids are risk takers. Usually adults, <laughs> caregivers, parents, oftentimes we can be a bit risk averse. There are certainly things that we can learn from kids through this process. So I appreciate you articulating that example of the benefits, because making time and space, modeling that as parents, certainly in our kids' mind puts value and premium on the importance of creativity, which that's something that we all have innately. And we want to ensure that our kids feel confident as they matriculate through school, that creativity is important and valued and we need to cultivate it. So no, that was such a great example. Thank you for that. And I should also mention that there is a saying that parents are a child's first teacher. You know, while that certainly rings true as being the child's first teacher, there is so much more that parents can learn from children to reignite their own creative spirits. Anna, creating can feel intimidating for those who lack creative confidence. Underlying emotions of stress and anxiety can begin to surface. Could you show us how to use a playful sensory experience that can both reveal and replace those underlying emotions. I'm going to be working with Crayola Play Sand today. I've actually used it a lot and my preschoolers love it. And we used it at my camp last year as well. It's a really cool sand because it's really fine and it's colored as well. It's a sensory play experience, but it's also just fun to manipulate. We're going to write words in the sand, kind words to ourselves. We're going to use this first project to kind of help us relax and rejuvenate. Actually, this is kind of a classic sight words activity, but in a, we're kind of reinventing it for adults. So what you'll need for this activity is just a tray. 
If you don't have a tray, I have, I'm going to show you a version later, but you can use like a pizza box with some colored paper underneath it. How we're going to do this project, very simple, no tools other than the tray and the sand. You're going to take some of the Crayola Play sand. You're going to put a very, very thin layer on your tray. And we're going to use this, start writing some simple words, some affirmations or words that make you feel good or remind you of things. I'm a big bullet journaler, so I always have a place to write something, a, a joyful thing that happened to me in the day. I have a place to write my reflections. I don't know if I can write that whole word here, but reflect. So you can kind of just use this tray to write or draw or doodle. And then the cool thing about it is you just simply shake it and you start over again. I was playing earlier with even like making different imprints with my fingertips. And certainly you could use tools. I'm gonna to show you in the next demo how you can use household objects to further play with the sand. But in this case, I'm just going to see how many things I can do with my own hand without any extra tools. I mean, this is so simple. It really doesn't get simpler than this, but it's really fun to play with. I'm going to show you how I do this on a couple other trays. So this is kind of a small tray, but you can go big, of course. So here's my bigger tray. The trays that I'm using right now, they have a colorful background, which is kind of cool because it adds a sort of layer of discovery. So let's start drawing on here. The blue is really cool. It gets a really good contrast, I think, with the white tray underneath it. And again, we can start drawing with our fingertip and you just get this really fun little pop of color underneath. It kind of reminds me, I think there was a toy when I was a kid, you would play with magnetic filings. And then when you were done with your design, you shake it and you get to make a new design. So, and if you need a little bit more sand, you can go ahead and add that. I found that adding too much made it a little harder for me to see the bottom. So let's try the handprint again. I think kids would really like this too. So this is something maybe you have a tray for yourself and your child. And you can get really playful and cute. If you don't have a tray like this, you can absolutely, like I said, use a pizza box. So I have this one I, I set up earlier today. I just put orange paper on the bottom of a pizza box. I put some tape along the edges so that the sand wouldn't fall out. And then I basically added in my sand. Let's do something peaceful. <laughs> yeah, you can see here that I have maybe a little bit too much sand. I'm not seeing the background as much. So if that happens, you just dump a little bit of it out and shake it. And I just love the way the sand works because it's so, so fine. You're going to see in the next activity how cool it is. It really like just flows beautifully and it's just great to the touch. So this is a really fun product to use. Let's love ourselves. And I'm going to write it in my, my, the blue one because I love the contrast with the white beneath it. Let's do... Absolutely, we should love ourselves. You know, and another way to really look at this is instead of writing positive words, sometimes we need to name the emotion that we're feeling and allow ourselves to feel it before we can move on. So sometimes, you know, I'm feeling very angry and it's okay. And so maybe I'm going to write that when I'm feeling that and I can simply shake it away. Or if I'm having, you know, a bad day, get a little more sand there you know we we talk about a lot, a lot of emotions in preschool and we try to name our feelings maybe we're going to draw that feeling then we can talk about why we're feeling that acknowledge that we're feeling that and then with the sand shake it away and try to process how we're going to get past the feeling or resolve what's going on so that we can feel joy again
Another thing that's really fun on why I like the sand. So I, I know I said for the trays, you need kind of a little bit of sand to be able to write, but this sand is such a wonderful sensory experience. So you might just want to also put a whole bunch in your tray and really feel it. So again, like I think as, as adults, we think of sensory experiences really as something for kids, but we need them just as much as kids do. You know, often we kind of relegate ourselves to like nature as our sensory experience. And we forget there's like everyday things around us. We feel like we have to do big things to help ourselves relax. But there's a lot of things that kids do, like playing with sand that we can also do to help us relax. I know I'm a big fan of the sandbox at our preschool. <laughs> I love to be in there. And so this sand is just like, it feels so nice between your fingers. So really, you know, when you're doing this, you might want to also consider thinking about like how the sand feels in your hand, the beautiful texture that it has, the way it's kind of gritty on your fingers and how it flows through your fingers. I, I can't wait to show you in the next demo Again, how you can use household objects to really also look closely at the sand and get into the kind of sensory experience that it offers. Wow, Anna, that was so amazing and so relaxing. I love how you've integrated the sense of touch, right, with our hands. And this is the only tool we need to feel the sand, to write our emotions, to recognize those emotions and to shake them away. And I also have to say that the sound of moving the sand was so relaxing. And again, to see those words appear and disappear has certainly relaxed me. Thank you for that demo. Sand can be manipulated in many ways from simply moving it around as we saw in our first demo with our fingers to using household objects to manipulate it. Anna, can you demonstrate how we can use household objects like a funnel or a comb to channel our emotions. All right, so this is the second demo I wanna share with you. I'm using the Crayola Play Sand and I've sprinkled some lavender in with it. So this is a sensory table that I would probably set up for my preschool age children, but I have done this with older kids at camp and I've had parents interact with this when we do my toddler classes. And this is always a hit with everyone. And I think it's because it's such a rich sensory experience all around, the way that the sand feels, the way it moves. And basically the, the, the idea is that we're going to take some kind of everyday objects, things you might find around your house, put them together in a big tray of sand, and then really observe the sand and how it moves through our fingers and how it moves through the objects. And you can also like use this idea to start like how you channel emotions. Since we're talking a lot today about, you know, how we're gonna use all these materials to kind of rejuvenate our creative spirit. So this is basically the setup we have. So I took a whole bunch of kind of objects that I have around, I call them loose parts. I've got some pegboard, I've got some cardboard tubes, I have a sieve, funnels and cups. And I'm gonna use these items to really play with the sand. So let me show you how I usually do this with my preschoolers and that this is kind of like how everyone really enjoys using it. So I like to set up layers. It's kind of a an architectural or structural engineering challenge as well. And we're gonna watch as the sand goes through the layers. Let me go taller. So. What I really like about this is it's just kind of fun to observe how the sand works and how it flows. And we're gonna try that. And it's also just a really beautiful sensory play experience all around. So we can use we can use cups to do it, but I think what's more fun is to really use your hands to play with the sand. And what you get are some really gorgeous patterns, which I will show you on an overhead view. And as you're moving this through your hands, you're really smelling the lavender, which is a very, has a very calming effect. And you're kind of feeling how all the textures feel on your skin. You can also use 
materials like funnels, which it's always fun to see the sand move through a funnel. We could catch it in a sieve and expand it. We can channel this down a ramp. And again, getting back to this idea of creative rejuvenation, how can we channel things we're struggling with or our frustrations? The sand can become sort of a metaphor for channeling all those feelings and letting go of them. One thing that's fun too is to see, and we're playing with this earlier today, where we stacked up the sand. and watched as it moved, as we removed layers of it. So again, I could come up with so many metaphors for how we take care of ourselves and self-care and how we remove layers and see what's underneath and really address them. I wanna show you some overhead views because I think it's really beautiful. So this is an overhead view of the sand. I love the sand with the pegboard because of the patterns you get. It's, it's really soothing. And then you can almost just like shake it away. Let's see what it looks like here. So as it falls, you get peaks and valleys in it. It's beautiful patterning. It just smells so good with the lavender. Structurally, this is really cool because it teaches kids how things flow. It teaches kids about balance and weight as they're creating the structure. And for adults, it's wonderful because you get to play. <laughs> you get to play like a kid again. And I'm gonna remove this top layer and see what we got underneath. And then we can add that in there. This is so fun to play with. I'm telling you, it's wonderful. It's also really neat to see. I'm gonna get some close-up shots for you guys to see how you play with it. When you get see it falling through. It's kind of like our emotions when we really think about it, how we're gonna let things fall through the cracks that aren't important and the beauty is left at the top. I'm a big believer in what percolates to the top is what's really important. So letting things sit. So in this case, I'm almost using the sand like that. So some of the sand is gonna be lost and that's okay. And what stays behind is a gorgeous pattern. And there you have it. That's how I like to use this sand together with some loose parts and some everyday objects to have a very sensory filled, relaxing experience. Anna, those patterns in the sand are simply beautiful. Thank you for these amazing demos today. I love how you've integrated multiple senses such as touch and smell with the lavender. How else might we use sand for playful experiences for ourselves or our kids this summer? So one of my favorite things to do with sand is this is taking me back to the 80s when we had a lot of jelly bracelets, but I like to make these. We do these at camp almost every year. We take some aquarium tubing and really tiny funnels and we put the sand and make patterns with it and make bracelets. And then we trade them. We make a whole bunch of them. It's, it's one of the campers favorite things to do. It's just a really relaxing activity for everyone. You can also do sand art, which is really fun. Everyone loves that. You know, paint with glue, drop some sand on top, shake it around, and then dump it to reveal your drawing that you made with glue. And then the last one that we really like to do is make sand slime. So slime is a favorite for older kids. And I don't know if you knew this, but you can basically take a basic slime recipe and then add in the play sand and it gives it this really wonderful grainy texture and it also takes on the color of the sand. So that's another really fun way to play with sand. Wow, Anna, thank you so much for these new ways of seeing sand as a wonderful medium to help relax us. That is the essence of creativity, seeing 
things that we see every day in new and creative ways. While our viewers are finishing up their words in the sand or channeling their emotions using household objects, I'd like to remind everyone that it is easy to stay updated on future Creative Spa for Teacher sessions and many other Crayola colorful learning programs. Just sign up for our Crayola Education newsletter. Each month, grains of ideas will be sprinkled right into your inbox. Okay, so Anna, you've given us such great insights today on how to be creative, reignite our creative spirit. You have so many incredible ideas to share. How can our viewers follow you and get more fun ideas from you? Uh, well, the first place I would go is my blog. It's www.babbledabbledo.com. <laughs> and then I'm also on Instagram at the same Babble Dabble Do and TikTok. So those are the places where I will be hanging out. Awesome. Thank you so much. And viewers, do give her a follow. Now, I thought that I would have to wait to go to the beach for some sand and relaxation. <laughs> and I feel so refreshed from these two exercises. And I'm eager to start creating my own sand art. What closing remarks or last bit of advice do you want to share with participants as they look to open themselves to be creative, sensory directed play experiences? I just think that as adults, we really need to spend some time with sensory experiences in general. I think we relegate that so often to like being a kid thing to do, especially an early childhood thing. But I have found through my experiences working with children and working at a preschool where adults are involved that parents and adults need this stuff just as much as kids. We may not know how to engage in it, but this is a wonderful opportunity for parents to really, you know, engage their senses. It helps relax everyone, helps you connect with people and children. And I just think that we need to prioritize more of these kinds of sensory experiences in our lives. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna. We want to thank you for inspiring us today. And we want to thank all of you for joining us. Remember that each grain of sand comes together to create a beautiful landscape. Just like every idea is important and every feeling makes us human. Take care of yourself and enjoy your summer. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye.